In the first part of the Catechism, the part dealing with the Creed, we talked about the creation of the human person and how when God creates man, he creates him with a longing in his heart, a longing that can only be fulfilled in his communion with God. We speak about the transcendent nature of the human person, that we are never satisfied just with what we can see and hear and feel with our senses. There's a part of our existence that only finds its meaning and purpose when we search for that which is beyond and when we are open to the transcendent. This is something that is recognized universally. All of the world religions would express this in different ways perhaps, but the same concept that we are a transcendent being and that we do have a role in our lives for the presence of God. Man is in search of God. From his being created in God's image and likeness, man desires God. This essential search for God is attested to by all religions. God calls man first. God tirelessly calls each person to that mysterious encounter known as prayer. God always takes the initiative in prayer. Our efforts are a response to God. And as God gradually reveals himself and reveals man to himself, prayer appears as a reciprocal call, a covenant drama. Through words and actions, this drama engages the heart. It unfolds throughout the whole history of salvation. The Catechism speaks about the universal call to prayer, the universal call to holiness. Each and every one of us, without exception, is called to a prayerful relationship with our God. Each and every one of us is created with that capacity, and we will only experience the fulfillment and the peace that God intends for us when we are people of prayer. In the Old Testament, prayer is bound up with human history, from the fall of Adam and Eve to the coming of Jesus into the world. Prayer is the relationship with God in historical events. And so the Catechism explores prayer in the Old Testament, looking at the various movements within the Old Testament, examining each one through the lens of prayer. Beginning with creation. The early chapters of Genesis describe God walking with the righteous, such as Abel and Enoch and Noah. Walking with God implies a special relationship, a kind of prayer lived by many righteous people in all religions. God's promise and the prayer of faith is made known through Abraham. In calling Abraham, God calls the father of the nations and he invites Abraham to walk with him in a very special way, making promises that only God can keep. God calls Abraham and Abraham obeys. Abraham's heart is submissive and obedient. Such attentiveness of the heart whose decisions are made according to God's will is essential to prayer while the words used count only in relation to it. Abraham took note of God's mighty deeds, and where God performed a mighty deed, Abraham constructed an altar and would offer sacrifice to God. This was very much part of the religious practice of people of Abraham's generation, people of all places at that time, to offer the sacrifice of an animal to offer the sacrifice of first fruits to God. Abraham was very clear that his God was looking after him and looking after his people. Abraham's first prayer is that of deeds. He constructs altars at each stage of his journey. Only later does Abraham use words, a veiled complaint reminding God of his promises which seem unfulfilled. From the beginning, prayer is shown as a drama 
the test of faith in the fidelity of God. Abraham experiences God in a very special way in Mamre. And this account given in the book of Genesis describes the mysterious visitors that Abraham welcomes into his tent. And Abraham provides them with hospitality. And the visitors note that when they pass by next year, Sarah, Abraham's wife, would be with child. Abraham relates this to Sarah, and because Sarah was elderly and well beyond the childbearing years, Sarah laughs. The Hebrew word for laughter is Isaac. And sure enough, one year later, Sarah holds baby Isaac in her arms. God has a plan for Abraham that he would be the father of the nations and that his descendants would be as numerous as the stars in the sky and the sands on the shore of the sea. God tells Abraham his plan and Abraham's heart is attuned to the Lord's compassion for men and he dares to intercede for them with bold confidence. Imagine then Abraham to be the father of the nations with his son Isaac and hearing the voice of God telling him to sacrifice Isaac. Imagine how difficult that was for Abraham to do. Yet obedient to God, Abraham takes Isaac up to a high place. Isaac carries the wood for the sacrifice up the hill a detail that we should remember, especially in relationship to our Lord, carrying the wood of the cross up the hill of Calvary. Abraham binds Isaac, places him upon the altar, pulls out his knife, and is fully prepared to be obedient to God when God sends his angel to intervene, staying the execution, staying the sacrifice. And God knew that Abraham's faith was sincere. God knew that Abraham would stop at nothing to show his devotion to him. God himself would later spare not his only son, our Lord Jesus, but would allow his only begotten son to be crucified, to become the perfect sacrifice for the forgiveness of our sins, such is his love for us, such is his fidelity to his promises. And so the father of believers is conformed to the likeness of the father who will not spare his own son, but will deliver him up for us all. Prayer restores man to God's likeness and enables him to share in the power of God's love that saves the multitude. The Catechism goes from Abraham as a man of prayer to Moses as a man of prayer. For Moses experiences in the burning bush a unique encounter with God, a powerful encounter that will make all the difference in the world for the people of Israel. Moses' prayer becomes the most striking example of intercessory prayer which will be fulfilled in the one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. God initiated this relationship, this prayer, calling Moses from the burning bush. God speaks to Moses of his plan to save the people of Israel. The living God wants his people to live. God will save his people only with Moses as his messenger, his associate in compassion. Moses learns to pray in the encounter. He balks, makes excuses, above all questions. And it is in response to his question that the Lord confides his ineffable name, which will be revealed through his mighty deeds. God tells Moses his name. Moses asks God, whom shall I say is sending me to Pharaoh? And God says, Tell Pharaoh, I am who am, sends me to you. 
God reveals something to Moses of his divine nature, sharing with a human being for the very first time his name, his ineffable name. Moses and God speak face to face as a man speaks to his friend. Moses' lengthy prayer with God and his fidelity to God's mission is characteristic of contemplative prayer. Moses draws strength and determination from this intimacy with God. Moses' relationship with God leads him to intercede tirelessly for his people, for healing, for victory, for forgiveness. The arguments of his prayer will inspire the boldness of the great intercessors among the Jewish people and in the church. God is love. He is therefore righteous and faithful. He cannot contradict himself. He must remember his marvelous deeds since his glory is at stake and he cannot forsake the people that bears his name. More on prayer in the Old Testament.